Welcome to another episode of Mental Health and Makeup Monday. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new and just stopping by, hi. I am back. I know, it's been a minute. I had COVID, not for like the last four months, obviously, but it was just one thing after another. I was carrying a lot and I just didn't have the energy. But I'm back and I'm hoping that I can get back to these periodically, no promises. But anyway, here I am. Hi, moving on. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about core beliefs. Some signs that you're falling prey to negative core beliefs are as follows. Okay, pay attention. All right. Self-sabotage, mm -hmm. not following through with things, cutting yourself off at the knees before you get started, procrastinating, perfectionistic tendencies, an inability to relax or unwind, feeling like you always have to be producing or going or doing, difficulty in social settings. Also, maybe you have a difficult time setting boundaries, these could all be indications that perhaps you have limiting core beliefs. Why is it important that we identify these core beliefs? Well, I mean, if they're negative core beliefs and they're standing in your way of you being the best version of yourself. So that's why. Also, it doesn't feel good, you know? And these things sneak up on you too. So while it might be tough at first, I really highly suggest that you take a minute and just like be honest with yourself and think about what it is that you're thinking about yourself. What are some false beliefs that you may have developed? So if you neglect to address these things or identify them, then they can cause bigger problems and we can create scenarios or find ourselves in situations where we're just reinforcing those negative core beliefs, okay? So really important. Limiting core beliefs and negative core beliefs usually stem from experiences in childhood before the age of seven. All right, so they're pretty deeply ingrained. So that means that it's a matter of being really proactive and mindful, possibly talking to a therapist if you're not already doing so, to be able to confront and challenge them and make shifts, okay? So now that I've given you some signs that maybe you're falling prey to your negative core beliefs and where they come from, here are a few examples of what negative core beliefs could be, okay? So a common negative core belief is I am worthless. I have no worth or value unless I am providing or giving or doing or being for someone else. Sometimes it's just I am worthless and it's not contingent upon anything, but that's just an example. And the thing to remember about core beliefs is that they're usually self-sustaining. So you've heard of confirmation bias, right? So believing something and then looking for something that confirms that bias. Essentially, that's what your negative core beliefs do, right? It looks for evidence to confirm that belief, okay? Which goes back to what I was saying earlier about why it's important to be proactive and mindful about them, all right? But getting ahead of myself, sorry. Had too much coffee and I'm out of practice. So, yeah. Anyway, where was I? Right then, moving on. Another one is I am inadequate or I am a failure. People can't be trusted. Things like I'm boring, I'm not an interesting person. Nobody wants to listen to me, nobody wants to talk to me. Those are all examples of negative core beliefs. There's many more, there's a laundry list. In fact, I'll put down a link below where you can kind of look over it for yourself and identify what are some of your negative core beliefs. All right, I forgot to mention another big sign that you might have some negative core beliefs is if you have disproportionate strong reactions to situations. That could be a sign that that belief is present for you and it will elicit strong defensive reactions, distressing emotions, whatnot. So that's another sign that you might be falling prey to some negative core beliefs. Another one I forgot to mention, I know, sorry, not scripted. Actually, I'm not gonna apologize because this is just how my grade works, okay? If you have a difficult time accepting like compliments, for instance, or positive or receiving positive information from people or situations, that could be a sign that your negative core beliefs are in charge and in the driver's seat because it's in direct conflict of that belief, right? So that could be another sign, pay attention to. Okay, so have I said anything yet that resonates with you? Hmm? Have you recognized some negative core beliefs? If so, what are you gonna do about it? Hmm? You know what I'm gonna tell you to do. Talk to the therapist. All right, so not only can core beliefs affect how you feel about yourself, it can also affect how you look at others and your relationship with others. So for example, if you have a core belief that in general, people cannot be trusted, they're out to get you, et cetera, et cetera, what's gonna happen? You're likely going to focus on information that supports this belief. Remember, Negative core beliefs are self-sustaining, so you will automatically look for information that confirms the belief that you have and discount evidence to the contrary. So you have to be really proactive 
an intentional mindful when you're trying to confront them and challenge them, but you first have to identify them. So you've got some signs to look out for to see if negative core beliefs are playing a role in your life. Once you've identified that, then take a good look and ask yourself, okay, what am I telling myself? You know, what is it that I'm saying? Am I saying that I'm not good enough? I'm, I'm not, I'm inadequate, I'm worthless. Is it pertaining to other people? People aren't trustworthy or things are just generally unfair. Another thing to keep in mind is that some of our core beliefs are influenced by societal expectations, familiar expectations, all things, okay? So this one can kind of be a little bit tricky. This is why it's important to do like a thought log or journal so that you can be in touch with your core values so that you can make sure that your core beliefs are in line with those values. So an example would be like anger is bad. All right, I think we're breaking free from that one a little bit, but it still seems to be pretty present. What happens if that's present for you? Well, you're not gonna give yourself permission to be angry. You're not gonna process your anger appropriately, and then you're gonna explode. That's producing the very thing that you believe to be the case, that anger is bad. No, anger is not bad, all right? It's how you think about what you feel that's the issue. So in that example, the core belief is that anger is bad. So what do you do? You avoid it, you push it away, you suppress it, and then something happens and you have a bad day and you explode. And then that explosion you feel guilty about because it was probably inappropriate or disproportionate to what was going on. That's reinforcing the belief that anger is bad. Okay. So when you're doing any kind of inner work, I highly, 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 highly encourage you to try to identify these areas in which you have false, negative, or limiting beliefs about feelings, about yourself, about people around you. This can open up a lot of doors for you to really improve things and to generally feel a little bit better about yourself and the world around you. Something else that might be helpful for you when you're reflecting on this stuff is to think about maybe some of your experiences, like in childhood, as I said before, most of our core beliefs are developed from that. Let's say that mom and dad were workaholics. And so maybe you were left alone a lot. Maybe you had to entertain yourself a lot. The negative core belief that could develop because of that is you're just not as important as other things or people don't want to spend time with you. Because when we're kids, we interpret things in weird ways because we're kids, we don't know any better. And usually we, we think it's because of us because we're kids, that's what kids do, you know. They're very egocentric, it's all about them all the time. And so you interpret things about having to do with who you are as a person and you carry that with you. So that could be an example of where a negative belief can come from. Or let's say you only got attention if you did something really well at school. You can imagine what kind of belief might form from that, right? You always gotta do and perform and be and succeed in order to get noticed, in order to have value, in order to have worth, okay? Or perhaps people focused on your looks, um, your weight. So you might have very strong attachments of worth and value to those things. Or maybe it was other things, like maybe you tried to do all those things and nothing was good enough and you never got the attention or praise or the I love you's or anything like that. And so to you, maybe it's just not worth doing things. Or you might feel like, oh, it just doesn't matter anyway. Nobody's going to notice. Nobody's going to care. Or you might just keep driving yourself to the ground doing all the things, trying to get validation or affirmation of your worth. I've been doing this thing uh, with this powder and I don't know, I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet. I mean, sometimes I think it looks good and then sometimes I feel like it looks a little cakey. What do you think? Let me know. I'm almost there, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. What do you think so far? Hmm? I would love to hear from you though if you've experienced what I'm talking about in terms of having negative core beliefs drive your responses and situations or drive, you know, your life and, you know, self-sabotage and all things. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. How did you challenge them? How did you identify them? What did you do? Let us know. Okay? I've got one last thing for you, so don't go anywhere, stay put. I'll be right back. Watch me. Here we are, final look, what do you guys think? Like it? Well, as promised, I had something good for you. So, once you have identified your core beliefs, noticing how they're presenting for you, you've examined the origin of them, now you can start to challenge yourself. You want to find evidence to the contrary of that belief. So for every negative core belief in which you found evidence for, you wanna think of three things to the contrary that will challenge that core belief. This is what we call cognitive reframing. All right, you're challenging cognitive distortions, unhealthy and unhelpful ways of thinking. All right, so like black and white thinking, for instance, a lot of times cognitive distortions, negative core beliefs are black and white. I can never do anything right. 
or this always happens to me, right? So keep those things in mind, put these things in practice, and before you know it, you might be feeling pretty good about yourself. And if not, and if you still need help with that, you know what I'm gonna say. Anyway, good to be back, glad you stopped by. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share and all the things. And until next time, be well, be strong, and be loved. I am so congested. Like, what is this? Can't breathe. I can't breathe anymore. Oh. No. I can't breathe. Oh, I can't breathe. <coughs> COVID. Ugh. I don't recommend it.